they cannot trust their own psychology they can't trust their own sociology they can't trust any of the sciences that are out there any of those philosophies that are out there and who tell you mm -hmm. you have to esteem yourself yes. beyond everything like else self -help. they have to understand that beyond self is Christ and self is supposed to be submit hello everyone welcome and thank you for joining us at TBP. My name is Colleen and today we're continuing within the study of the book of Ephesians. We're actually on study number nine today which is entitled Living Wisely. I am here with um, Pedro and we'll be taking the study with you today. Before we actually start um, this week's study um, we will have a word of prayer. Pedro, could you please pray okay, for let's us? Pray. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for blessing us with the opportunity to study your word. We call upon the, your Holy Spirit to keep our thoughts and our minds in you and to instruct us and give us the power to obey. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Pedro, living wisely. I think um, most, I think everyone wants to live wisely. Um, everyone wants to live in a way that um, is positive, really. Um, and I wanted to um, start with asking you about Ephesians 1 to 5 and to um, just see what you actually understand by this text. I'll just read that. Um, Ephesians 1, Ephesians 5, um, 1 to 5, and it says, be ye therefore followers of God as their children, and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us, and having given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God with a sweet-smelling savour. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becoming saints, neither filthiness, nor foolish, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. And five, for this ye know, that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. So I think that's an important text when we're looking at um, living wisely. Yes, and you want to know what to make of, yes. of that. Now, I, I notice that your text begins differently from mine. My, my text, I, I, I use the, the Revised Standard Version. Right, okay. And it begins with what you would call um, a conclusive conjunction. That's the word, therefore. Yeah. You, you, I think you have it somewhere yes, yes, there, but it doesn't I've got begin here, with it. Be ye therefore followers yes. of God. It starts with being therefore, but my yes. mind says therefore. therefore. Right, okay. So, I, I mean, in. It basically connects. The yes. But what text something text. has been discussed or right. something has been said before, and now we come to a point where there is a sort of conclusion yes. that goes further about it so what is it have, that has been said before you started chapter four uh, sorry you started chapter five verse one now i want you to one go to back five yes yeah one to five but i mean you started chapter five verse yes. one yes i did yes. now i want you to go back to what was said before in order to find out if you go to chapter four and you read verse 30 okay because that's like the like like the end almost of the yeah. previous okay so 430 reads and grieve not the holy spirit of god whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption absolutely okay. and from that point on is the question of how not to grieve the spirit right, is being okay. answered and it is right. within that yes. answer yeah. that you have verses one to five and also what follows 
after that mm -hmm. are you with yeah, me yeah and that's an important point when we th when we're thinking about living wisely to live in accordance with the holy spirit and not to grieve the holy spirit yeah so so look at verse 3 again for me how not to grieve the holy spirit verse 3 verse 3 of chapter okay. 5 Okay, so chapter 5, 3 says, But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becoming saints. So how not to grieve the Holy Spirit by which you have been sealed, okay. which is again a reflection of what he was saying in chapter 1, verses 3, 7 to 9. In him we have received redemption and forgiveness of sin, and we have received all kinds of blessing in spiritual, in in. in in uh, heavenly places uh, all of that is connected now you have at a practical level in verse 3 notice the word um, fornication yeah fornication means immorality and it has right. to do with yeah. sexual behavior yeah right? so it's an interesting point because it seems as though that these particular it's, it's as though it's these particular sins or these particular issues that are grieving the spirit, but surely it's more than that. It's more than that, but he is, he is developing more than that. You're just looking at right. that section for now. But what is important is that he is, he, he, he is um, talking about this. Okay. If he's talking about this, yes. th there is a need. Right. For that. So going back to fornication, so you're saying it's immorality. So that means it encompasses a lot of things. Fornication it? in Paul's writing right yeah. there is immoral sexual conduct. So that encompasses everything within that. Because fornication, the only why I'm asking, because typically fornication it's in our minds or in my understanding is specific for like say an um, unmarried couple who have relations yes, outside there, of there marriage. is room in the bible to, to 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 understand it this way we actually did a live yes. on that so there is room in the bible to understand it this way so so paul is definitely that is definitely included in there yes. but it's generally immorality that has to do with sexual behaviors okay okay that's that's fornication here yes but also just quickly on cleanness i mean yeah what i'm does... coming to oh, this right, okay so so <laughs> I, I was just noticing the words so you have fornication which is immorality you have yes. also uncleanness yes that is not having thoughts and actions that are not pure that right. defile the mind that you're supposed to have in Christ. Because he's still talking to Christians who are supposed to be in Christ. So entertaining thoughts and actions that are against the purity of Christ. Okay. Whatever level that is, mm -hmm. that includes the preceding immorality statement. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? And then you have something else that is added to that, that is greediness. Covetousness, yes. Covetousness, or you can translate that with uh, also as greediness. greediness that yes. has to do with how you relate to money and material possessions sessions mm -hmm. and you relate to other people with that mm -hmm. because you will take from people or will not share with people yes. because you have this issue of greediness mm -hmm. and you will act devilishly if I may say this right if you have this issue in your heart just quickly I know you're trying to build them um, um Trying yeah. to build an argument. So going back to the uncleanness and you, talk, and you talked about thoughts, does that include like negative thinking? No, what he's talking here, when you say negative thinking, this is a, a broad thing. Right. Are you with me? He is definitely talking about that which we know, because remember, do not grieve the Holy Spirit. That which we know that the Spirit of God wants to remove out of our right. lives, okay. because we've already received forgiveness for these things. Remember, in chapter 2, he was telling them, remember who you were, far from God, lost in sin, children of wrath, 
Are you with me? Yes. So now he's continuing to say, don't grieve the spirit who made the difference in your life and who made you who you are now. Don't go back to that sort right. of behavior. Yes. You with me? So all of that is included in that. So he is telling them that holy people, people who have received Christ in their lives, they do not traffic right in those things in these kind of behaviors they do not traffic in those kinds of behaviors they are citizens of the heavenly kingdom they sit on the lap of omnipotence they sit with the head in heavenly places therefore they can't be engaging in immorality uncleanness and greediness yes as a church Right, okay. So, um, I just wanted to ask, I know I'm, I'm asking quite a, a, a lot of additional questions today, but um, what's Paul actually trying to say, what's Paul actually trying to say here? I'm just trying to understand that within this whole idea of living wisely and the importance of living wisely. So, is he trying to, um, to paint a practical picture um, of what it's like to live in Christ and to be in Christ? Or is there something else here? That is definitely the case. He is trying to paint a practical picture of what it means to be in Christ. Because, you know, sometimes we can be very theological yes. and say, well, we, we are in Christ. But how does that look like in, how you in live your practice? Life. Yeah. Well, he is saying, don't be greedy. Don't be unclean. Don't give yourself to immorality. Behave a certain yes. way because you're supposed to have a certain mindset. And I want you to read further this same chapter verses 6 to 9 it, he continues with that okay so 6 to 9 so we're still in 5 6 to 9 and it says let no man deceive you with vain words for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience be not ye therefore partakers with them for ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. And nine, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. So the fruit of the Spirit is all goodness, righteousness and truth. That means the fruit is what comes out, what transpires, what the result of you being in Christ is. And if you are in Christ, there needs to be righteousness that means yes, you need to do true. right there needs to be um uh, what's the words you use um goodness, goodness righteousness and truth so so paul is appealing to their understanding of the difference between light and darkness in their nature and purpose you can't mistake light for darkness you can't replace darkness with light and vice versa these things are different and opposed so if you are going to be in christ if you are not going to grieve the spirit there are some fruits that need to be the outcome of your relationship with God this is what he is saying and on the notion of light you need to make a difference into this dark world read for me please John chapter 8 verse 12 at a practical level Okay, John eight twelve. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. If you are in Christ, you can't be walking in darkness. When you walk, when, when you walk in, in darkness... <sighs> You are danger for yourself and you are danger for everybody who yes, is around you, you. As a Christian, you can't be that. No. All right? And then, read for me, Matthew chapter 5, verse 4, verse 14, sorry. It says, Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. 
you have to be able to make a difference in people's lives in terms of shedding light that will enlighten the path on which they're supposed to walk in this dark world you as a person and we've seen that before now you remember what he had told them and i keep going back to this in ephesians 1 verse 18 can you read that for me please okay ephesians 1 18 and it says the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. This is highly theological through the way he's made that statement. But let me, I'm glad to tell you that the, por the portions that you have just read in Ephesians 5 are actually the, de the practical development of what he is saying. The, the, the the hope of your calling is the expectation of God as to how to live your life. Right. So in chapter 5, he is clearly laying it out. And we can go even further. If you read chapter 5 for me, Ephesians chapter 5, and you read verses 10 to 13, he moves even further with that. Okay, five, Ephesians 5, um, 10 to 13. And it says, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather prove them for it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are proved are made manifest by the light for whosoever doth make manifest is light. He is telling them that their, their lives in Ephesus is supposed to be a part of God's solution to the problem of evil and darkness, not a part of the problem. So a, how they live their lives. A part life. of the solution. Yes. Of course. The way yeah. they live their lives in that very city. Are you yes. with me? There needs to be a practical outcome that is positive for yourself and those around you when you are in Christ. And he's telling them there is no way that is not happening because your mission is to shed light by virtue of being in Christ as we read it in John 8 12 who is the light of the world who lightens the world so that no one who follows him may walk in darkness are you understanding me I am yes so Paul is making it very clear that the Christian is part of God's solution to the problem of evil. And we've already seen or, or, or discussed that when we spoke about Ephesians chapter 3 verses 8 to 9 concerning the mystery and how the church reveals the many-sided wisdom of God by destroying the enemy simply by having people being in Christ. Are you with me? I know I spoke a lot, but mm. Are you, are you following me? Yes. So, at a practical level, look at verse 10 again in this chapter 5. Okay, it says, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. Your walk with God is one that is such that you commune with him as a Christian constantly seeking to give glory to him in the choices in the decisions that you make that's how practically you impact this world that's how practically the light you receive from Christ who is the light of the world will reflect through you into this dark world and propose a solution to the issue of evil mm. are you with me yes that is supposed to be practical there will be these people in Ephesus they will be the solution that God proposes because they have now placed God above self yes so 
This is so interesting, Pedro. And the reason why um, this is really important is because there's two things that come to mind just quickly when we when we talk about this. Because we've talked about grieving the spirit, and we've talked about different characteristics. And two things that come to mind. The first is um, like a lot of Christians, or a lot of us as Christians, we look to the things that we do in relation to. So I pay this and. I worship on this day, I go to church, I do this. And in our mind, this is what makes us Christian. This is what makes us like Christ-like, but yet our life, our deportment, our deportment of character is nothing to do with this. It's nothing to do with, you know, living a righteous life. And, you know, you know, these ideas about greediness and fornication. So we don't live according to these things outside of whichever day we worship. And then the other thing that comes to mind when we talked about grieving the Holy Spirit is I think about the people who identify the Holy Spirit only by being able to, for example, speak in tongues or, you know, just, just like a practical means, but this is missing. Like it doesn't matter Absolutely. how you live. Your, it doesn't matter how you live, how you treat people. If you're greedy, if you're fornicating, none of that matters. All that matters is that you can speak in tongues. That, that, so, that's so why. in my mind, you've got these two contrasts. Oh, I'm Christian because I do A, B, C, D. Your character's not right. Or I've got the spirit because I speak in tongues. Your character's not right. That's so why. Neither of them. That's why there will be surprises when God, when, when Jesus will say, okay, I heard about you doing all these things in Matthew 7. I heard about you doing all these, all these things, but I, 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 I've never known you. Yeah, I never knew you depart from me. So, okay, with all of that said, you talked about selfishness. Um, um, and they have placed and God, God above self. Yeah, but like, but it's our, but isn't that our nature? It is our nature, yes. Yeah, so my question is, how would you manage to put God before self when it's by, by I don't know, like by When nature. by nature we yeah, are that, selfish. That's who we are. That's who nature. we are. Okay, because don't now, again, remember, Paul is speaking about being in Christ. Right. We've is, seen yeah. that when you are in Christ, you are a modified being. You remain a human being, yes. but now you are a human being who is empowered by the Spirit of God to do the works of God in your life. It's not even your works. It's the works of God. So you write by saying you remain a human being as bad as you are. But the thing is, because you have placed God above you, it's no longer you living this life. It's God. That's what Paul is saying yes. in Galatians 2.20. Now, I would want to say we are not who we are. We are who we want to be as Christians. Let me explain that. Read for me Ephesians chapter 5 still, verses 14 to 17, please. Okay. It says, wherefore... He saints, awake that thou sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give ye light. Mm -hmm. See then that ye walk circumspect, not as fools, but be wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. And 17, wherefore ye not, wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. So now remember that Paul is speaking in chapter 5 to people whose lives were in darkness as chapter 2 tells us. We won't have the time to read that now but if you go you can check from um, chapter 2 verses 1 to 7 Paul was asking them to reflect on who they were and through the Spirit of God how they their lives changed so you no longer who you were you are modified you somebody yes. else and that's why he is saying grieve not the spirit who is now active in your life it's not god is taking care of who you were yes. to make you who you are supposed to be but in your mind you will be who you want to be because you still make the decision and if you're contemplating being in christ 
Christ, you will be in Christ. Mm -hmm. So it's not about your nature anymore. It's about who works in you. Yeah, it's when the Bible talks about being a new creature, isn't it? That's exactly what I'm saying in 2 Corinthians 5, 17. That's what he is saying. So now read for me. Uh, unfortunately, we won't have time to go to Ephesians 2, 1 to 7, okay. but, but I've explained it. He, he, he wants these people to think, look, you no longer who you were. That's why you can't, you can't go back to that because God has moved you away mm -hmm. from that. Now, read for me verse 15 of chapter 5. Please. Okay, so we did miss out Ephesians um, 2. That's what I said, 1, to, 1 7. to 7. But hopefully the viewers will be able to read that um, for themselves at home. So you wanted me to read Ephesians 5, 15? Yes, please. Okay, Ephesians 5, 15 um, reads, See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but be wise. So what Live Paul wisely. is saying, exactly, yes. what Paul is saying is, if they want to be in Christ and they want to, to live a wise life, they know then that they cannot trust their own morality. Yes. They cannot trust their own psychology. They can't trust their own sociology. They can't trust any of the sciences that are out there, any of those philosophies that are out there and who tell you mm -hmm. you have to esteem yourself yes. beyond everything it's like else. Self help. They have to understand that beyond self is Christ, and self is supposed to be submit or subjected to Christ. Yes. They because when they were following self, they were in darkness. That's what Ephesians 2 1 to 7 is saying. But God has changed that mm -hmm. in their lives now. Now, I want you to read another text for me, which is verses 18 to 21 of same chapter. Please. Okay, and it says, And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing and making melody in your heart to the lord giving thanks always for all things unto god and the father in the name of our lord jesus christ and 21 mm -hmm. submitting yourself one to another in the fear of god so they can't submit to their own morals and directions they need that of christ and now in this passage Paul is explaining them how to do that. They have how to maintain their identity in Christ, and that's very practical. Okay, so if you if you would summarize um, about you know the relevance for us today, what would you say? The passage that you just read already summarizes what kind of thought that Paul is developing. That is, your identity in Christ will by necessity, by necessity move you into living wisely. And living wisely is everything that he said here that you can't do or you have to do with and being under the Holy Spirit's direction. Are you with me? Now, look at verse 18 again. Okay, quickly. And it says, And be not drunk with wine, wherein is an excess, but be filled with the Spirit. This is a question about where your mind is, mm. right? Be not, he's using the idea of wine. but that, Being drunk. Yeah. Being drunk. That is living or taking leave of the senses that the Spirit of God is instilling in you through the teachings of Christ. Don't take leave. Now, he spoke about wine, but you can be inebriated by immorality. Yes. We saw it. You can be inebriated by uncleanness. We saw it. You can be inebriated by greediness. Yes. We saw it. So he's just using the idea of wine, which is also there as a, um, a real practice, but more so to depict how your mind has to remain under God's control. 
So this is a question about what powers your mind right. the, the, when he uses the notion of don't be drunk. Don't be drunk. But be how? Be sober. Be sober. And then he speaks about verse 18. Verse 18. Sorry. Um, but be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit. That is, the notion of being filled means let every aspect of your life be under the control of the Holy Spirit. Right. Like, for yeah. instance, your sexual life. Or like, even, for or instance, how you manage your finances. your finances or how you relate to other people. Let all aspects of your life be under the control of the Holy Spirit. Do not go back to where you were before the Holy Spirit came into your life. You will be part of the problem, not part of the solution in this dark world. Yeah, I think that's wonderful though, that that being drunk, what you've just said, isn't just about wine. It's just, it's about all these other things. And yeah. um, I'm sure many people have never seen it like that before. That, you know, all these other things in our lives can make us you know, in a sense, drunk. That's why I want you to go, well, you don't need to go there, but if we if we look at verses three and four, this is what I have explained about the immorality, the uncleanness, the, the, the greediness, those things, they condition our minds yeah. to live in ways that are contrary to the fruit yeah. or the outcome of the work of the Spirit in our lives, and yeah. we create chaos yeah. around us. Just to us. quickly summarize what these are, I won't read the full text. So fornication, uncleanness, covetousness, um, and also it talks about filthiness, foolish, foolish talking, jesting. Um, so it talks about all of those things, but then it also talks about um, whoremongering, um, covetousness, idolatry. So there's quite so there's quite a lot there. That's that's correct, and and and, and I'll just throw this in there um, to conclude with what with what we're saying because time is going. You may not have any attraction for alcohol if you want to stick to do not be yeah. uh, drunk yeah. with wine. And there's a lot of people who yeah. wouldn't class themselves within the fornication So practice. no attraction to that. No. So that's not an issue for you. But let me, let me, 21st century. But greed. Oh, let me bring it to a lower level. <laughs> How do you allow, because we're talking about immorality. Mm -hmm. How do you allow the electronic devices that you possess Mm. that you can't separate from. They're part of your being, mm. right? Then to the toilet, Yes. right? How do you allow them to be under the influence of the Holy Spirit in your life? Yes. Do you watch TBP? <laughs> or do you spend more time? Watching YouTube self-help videos. <laughs> <laughs> We're joking with that. But 21st century. Yes. This is what it is. Mm. What controls your life? What it's powers yeah. your life? Are you in the word of yeah. God wanting a deeper connection yeah. with Christ so that you can be part of this marvelous plan? Yeah. Or are you wasting your time? Yeah. Yeah. Or another question I think. Drunk in your like, spirit with all kinds of things. Yeah. Like what's really important to you? What do you spend all your time doing? What takes up most of your time? So... Um, you need to ask yourself eventually the question, is this wise living? Yes. Is this eventually. wise living? Is this wise living? Paul has answered about what is wise living. Yes. We need to bring this one in. Yes, yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for that, Pedro. I've really, really enjoyed this study. And um, viewers, I just want to ask, um, are you living wisely? Um, after we've discussed so many things today, um, you know, where is your focus? How do you spend most of your time? What consumes everything that you do on a day-to-day -day basis? 
what do you gravitate to first thing when you wake up in the morning and the last thing at night and what has what have you got in your life that's allowed you to push Christ out and that's an important question that we all need to ask ourselves and do you spend more time if you look at verse 21 do you spend more time competing with people around you mm -hmm. or humbling yourself with those around you. I wanted to put that in. It's an excellent point. Thank you, Pedro. So um, this week, and um, you know, as we continue through our studies, I'm asking everyone, our viewers of TBP, to live wisely. So thank you once again, Pedro, for that study. And thank you for joining us. I hope you were blessed. Don't forget to subscribe, to like, and share this video. And also please join us for our lives every Saturday at 3 p.m. GMT time. So see you again next week for another study with TBP.